leave the bitumen to put it back into four drive and you don't get bogged on this little jumper that comes in and out of your wrong. We have just pulled out of your wrong and we're just on the eastern beach of Fraser Island heading north up towards Orchid Beach. going past the police station we should see groups of people tailor fishing today because the tailor season is meant to be quite good this year best in 10 years I've heard a rumor so we should be in for a treat and catch a few fish the beach today looks beautiful it's very very flat tides on its way out five o'clock low and um, yeah it should be a really cruisy run up to Orchid Beach because the tides are quite big, the beach is very smooth and very flat. When you drive the beach when there's neap tides, where there's not a lot of run between the high and the low, the beach can get very hilly because there's not enough difference between the high and the low tide to, um, to flatten the beaches out. It's a good idea to put your lights on too when you travel on the beach. But yeah, just put your lights on because you've got all that sea spray that you can see up in front there. If you've got your lights on, people can see you a lot more clearly. As you travel along the beach, you'll see a number of little creek crossings towards the southern end of the island and um, Eli Creek and Little Eli. The, the creek crossings are a little bit bigger and you've got to slow down a lot more, probably walking speed or less. Um, the way to tell if it's deep or shallow, as you approach it, if there's little rapids in the water or it's uh, the, the water's um, disturbed on top it's generally shallow if you come up to one and the, the water's very smooth and you don't see the little rapids slow down because it's most likely going to be de a lot deeper and that's as we travel along we don't have to slow down for every single creek we just watch out for the, the smooth water and the rapidy water when you when you're going through these sections of seepage it's hard to tell where the salt finishes and the fresh begins so generally what I do is when there's no seepage, I just have a look and get a rough idea of the beach distance. So that to my right there, well, there's a little bit of seepage and then the salt water. So the, the salt water is basically at the top of the waves there where the waves push up. So I wouldn't go and drive anywhere on my right hand side now because that is most likely definitely salt. Um, when we get to the seepage areas, I'll try and stay about this distance away from the sea and then that should keep me out of the salt water. Here's another section where there's seepage coming out of the island so I know I can look beside me here and see how far the salt's coming up so I know that where I'm running through here um, there's definitely this is definitely fresh water and it's just seepage from the island. This is an airstrip on the island here they've got a couple of witches hats here and a few more up front so there's a couple there to let us know that there's a landing strip up here and then as we travel further along there'll be more witches hats just marking out the section of beach that they want to land their plane on if you can stay completely out of that coned off area if the tides higher and you have to drive through there just check for planes behind you and in front of you and then go through that area that they've got sectioned off if you can see a plane in the distance, just work out where he's going and what he's doing before you drive through that airstrip. Generally, you'll be certain that um, if they're gonna land, you can see it quite easily that they're coming in to land and just pull up and stay out of the way. I've just got my indicator on, letting this bus know that I'm gonna stay to the left even though there was some soft sand there that I didn't want to go through so I had to approach to where the bus was just gives him the confidence that I'm going to um, not pull out in front of him we've got a vehicle come up behind us now so I'll just indicate slow down a little bit let him go through give him plenty of room he's traveling a lot quicker than we are here we are in a 40k zone keep an eye out for these four knot we call them four knot zones but the 40k zones because the police will if you go 1k over they can book you in here 
and um, it's just for the safety of the public around the, um, the different townships and things. So just slow down and do, do your 40Ks. Uh, this is Piungan Rocks here. So we just have to see whether we have to drive around these rocks or whether we have to go, by the looks of it, we have to use a jump up and go around the back. Okay, when you get to these rocks, if there's wheel tracks around the rocks, um, you can generally follow those wheel tracks and get around the front. But if you see the rocks all the way to the water like that, where you're going to be driving in the water to get around the rocks, don't do it. Because if you go into a small melon hole or hit a small rock or something, it'll bog your vehicle. And then the waves come in and out a couple of times and your vehicle's gone. It'll sink straight to the ground. So if you're going to run through the front there, make sure you're on dry sand and you've got a clear view of where you're going to be going. So these tracks are two-way tracks. So I don't know why these guys are pulling up on that side, but anyway. So these are two-way tracks, so we just have to give way to each other and, and be courteous with each other and work our way through. Younger rocks, lovely little spot, great fishing in front of here. Um, these rocks, you get a lot of a lot of different species of fish in here. The tailor would definitely come in here, but when it's not tailor season, you still get flathead, brim, tarwine, whiting. Very, very productive um, spot to fish. You definitely never go thirsty on this island because there's that much fresh water that runs out of the island. So we've got a, another sign letting us know 40 k's ahead. When we get to the 40 k sign, we'll slow down. So we'll have a look, see if we can get around the front again. If we can't get around the front, it doesn't look like anyone's going around the front. So we'll um, looks like we've got to go around the back again. Piangan Rocks is a very short jump up. This one's a little bit longer, but there are more passing areas in this one for vehicles to get, get by each other. Sydney Rocks accommodation, quite a nice little spot to stay. See this track through behind Sydney Rocks to Happy Valley is a lot wider. And there's a lot bigger, more overtaking areas where you can pass vehicles and fit two vehicles past each other. That track there will go to Happy Valley. This track will go down to the beach. When I'm in these tracks, I generally stay over to my side because it's most times you, you, you do have oncoming traffic because it's a pretty busy little section so drive on your side of the road Valley. 
just remember when you come off that jump up, we're still in a four knot zone. So you still have to do 40 k's an hour through here. It's easy to come off that track and forget that it's still 40 k's. And um, the police hide just in here or just past this set of coffee rocks up, up here with the, um, looks like a Joshua tree on it. And the little village, Happy Valley. There's a little restaurant and a pub here. You can get fuel, a little township and accommodation. There's another 40k sign just here. We're just approaching Eli Creek. So we'll slow down to 40k's because there are a lot of pedestrians and vehicles around this area. So we'll slow right down and Eli Creek is always uh, deep enough that you have to go very slowly in your approach into Eli Creek. Perfect spot to come, wash all the salt off, float down the river with the kids. In winter time, this we're at the end of winter now, but in winter time that water is absolutely freezing. When you come here in summertime, we'll be back in a few months, um, it's a lot, lot nicer to swim in. This is the Mahino shipwreck. The Japanese actually bought this ship for scrap metal and they were towing it back to Japan when a big cyclone came through and it broke all the tow ropes and then the ship was just drifting at sea and the storm blew the ship into the beach and it's been here ever since. When you come through these sections like this and you're, you're a bit unsure because there's water in the middle of the beach, we call that a split beach so that you can go on the high side or the low side of the water. Sometimes if you go on the low side, it just goes into the ocean and you've got to turn around and go back. Um, so I just generally look for the wheel tracks. If you can see tire tracks through there, um, you gen that's usually a good indication that you'll get, get around it or get through it. Just coming up onto the pinnacles now, another nice spot to pull up and go for a walk with the family. Every time you go in there, it's always something a bit different. Definitely cool place to check out. First first group of tailor fishermen. We might just pull up and have a little look, see whether they're catching any fish. Here we are at Cathedral Beach. Another nice little spot to go in and have a coffee in there. More tailor fishermen here. I'll just, I've got a couple of vehicles behind me so I'll just pull over let these guys go through because they obviously want to go a lot quicker than we do. Taylor are great fun to catch in the surf. They, they go really hard. You get a, a 400 long tailor and you'll think he's a metre long because they pull so hard. So they're a good sporting fish to, to catch. And um, they, When you eat them, if you eat them fresh, they taste fine. Just make sure you get the bloodline out of them. Um, but otherwise that can taste quite fishy. Yeah, trying to freeze them and take them home. They're not going to be the greatest fish to eat if you freeze them and defrost them. Yeah. The tailor definitely bring a lot of people to the island. The, the fishermen love it. You come to this soft sand like this, we can't go in the hard sand because these guys want to use it. Just slow right down because it will knock your vehicle from side to side and people have roll, rolled their car over by going into those deep wheel tracks too fast. Yeah, there's rubbish bins placed along the beach so you can take your rubbish and preferably if you bring rubbish to the island take your rubbish home because you got it in your vehicle to get it here so put it in, bring big bin bags or secure area that you can put the rubbish in spare wheel ba rubbish bags and um, take it all home but if you can't or it's a bit stinky put it in the, the bins on the beach there provided This time of year they'll have breathalysers and speed traps on the beach too because there's so many people on the beach. Peak times, busy times like this, they'll always, police will be, have a presence on the beach and they will set speed traps up and definitely breathalysers. So have a designated driver and stick to 
stick to the speed limits. The police will never ever, well I've never seen the police pull anyone over on the island that's not doing something wrong. So if you've got your seatbelt on and you're doing the speed limit, the police normally will never bother you. I've never, in 30 years, I've never seen a police officer pull anyone over that's not doing something stupid. So if you, if you do the right thing, they leave you alone over here, which is great. It's, you're better off not parking like that. Turn your vehicle side on so everybody knows you're parked up and you're fishing. This is Little Eli. It's another little creek to great family spot for a picnic. There's a lot less people swim here so you've usually got the creek to yourself. And if you go upstream a little bit, um, there's some little tracks through there you can hop into the creek and walk down just like Big Eli but it's only like a meter wide and now as you walk down you'll see a lot of big jungle perch and things like that in the creek. It's still a great spot for the family for a swim, wash the salt off. If you're staying at the northern end of the island and you do want to take the kids for a swim, um, if you go to the champagne pools or whatever and you want to wash the salt off, it's a lot closer to go to than, than Big Eli Creek. See, this guy's got the perfect parking etiquette for Fraser Island. Parked up, side on. We all know that he's parked up. There's going to be people walking around the car so we can stay away or slow down because we know he's parked up there fishing. These are campsites, are beautiful, but the beach is so busy. That's why I prefer to go further north, there's just less traffic. Just on the southern side of Indian Head, and normally this is one, a very productive section of beach to fish for Taylor. Pretty much every year for the last 10 years, if you can't find fish anywhere, you come here and you can, you can find the Taylor, because there's always big gutters here. We normally come down in the afternoon and fish till about 8 o'clock at night and then mosey on home because there's not a lot of beach driving. It's only middle beach and um, through the tracks. That's so easy to get home in the dark. So they've had rain through here so it's not boggy through there even though it's very chewed up. So I think that's just from people driving in all different directions through there. But um, it's pretty easy to get up there. We've got 18 psi in the tyres and the car didn't even spin a wheel once. If it is boggy through there and people are getting stuck, especially if you're towing a boat, um, then you, you definitely want to drop your tyres down a lot lower than 18. But if you're just a single vehicle, no trailer, 18 psi, you'll get through there every time. So at the moment you're not allowed to fish through this section, this section's closed for the Taylor season. But when it's not Taylor season, fishing through here is absolutely fantastic. This big gutter here, always just on the northern side of Indian Head, is always really good. So now we're approaching the Champagne Pools and we will turn up to the jump up to the left there and it's all the way through to Orchid Beach. So they've had big tides and rough seas and there's been a lot of erosion here as you can see by that massive drop off there. So they, because normally the ocean is probably 200 meters away from this jump up but because of the erosion it's right at the jump up. So there is no more beach driving between here and Orchid Beach. And this track that we're on will take us all the way through to Orchid Beach. Thanks for watching our videos. 
If you're wanting more information on about Fraser and traveling the beaches and enjoying all the beautiful things to see over there, we have a YouTube channel that you can subscribe to, All About Fraser. And on there, there's a collection of videos that you can watch and go through. And there's you'll pick up a huge amount of knowledge watching the videos. So when you get there, it won't feel like the first time at all. Thank you.